Good morning, everyone. I'm very happy to be here. It's a, such a great conference. Uh, it's an honor for me. Uh, this is about uh, like a research we started in like two years ago with the, in collaboration with three universities and the Brazilian Forestry Service, which is, is, is a part of a, they like do research with wood and other uh, feedstock uh, for related with uh, for Brazilian forests and uh, etc. I was invited to to join this project by Rafael Nede and uh, Bugi, and then we started working together. And Alexandre is another key person because he's the uh, biologist uh, at the, the lab who does the analysis and work with the woods, yeah, right? And so it's a bit difficult to, to manage this. We're quite far from each other, uh, except for me, Alexandre, uh, and Malu Costa, which is our intern who did most of the research, like the, the microscopic images and uh, the first initial references we, we had, uh, we have from before starting was, I, I, I'm trying to collect some key uh, references, uh, more contemporary, there are a lot of historic stuff, but Rafael did his master's on contemporary uh, letterpress printing in Brazil, and Isabella was uh, doing research about the largest foundry in, of the 20th century in Brazil. But of course, there are many other uh, references and sources we used for the project. Uh, this, uh, these are the, the dissertations of, of Rafael and uh, Isabella's PhD thesis. Uh, and Rafael already had some experiences trying to, to produce type uh, with, with one of his students at a postgrad course in Sao Paulo. So they were trying to do some historic uh, restoration of, of wood type using 3D printers inspired by other, uh, by other projects. I, I remember of something in the UK by Henry Kubel. Uh, using 3D, uh, 3D printers to, to produce type. Uh, so, uh, then when we started to work, uh, our initial intention was to, like, to design type and make wood type. Uh, and I made myself the question, uh, okay, we, we have Rob Roy Kelly's book, he, he indicates species such as maple, oak, oak and pine, uh, species that we don't have in Brazil. So what kind of wood should we use? So this was a key question. Of course, we know that we need good hard wood, but it could be a research topic. So this led me to the, the, the hypothesis that endemic species uh, were used for wood type production in South America throughout the 20th century. I, and I mean, not only in Brazil, but we had type production in Argentina, in Mexico, and others, other uh, countries as well. Uh, and then, uh, sorry, and then I, I met this guy, uh, Thiago Rodriguez, one of the guys listed at the map, it's like a childhood friend, and we were like, I was, we were having lunch on Sunday, and I commented with him, uh, make a comment about the project, and he's a forest engineering, like, uh, like hardcore science guy, uh, PhD, and everything, uh, and then he said, "Wow, identifying species is such an easy thing, the, seriously." We're talking seriously. It's very easy. You can do this very quickly. Okay, let's try to do this. So, 
we, we started doing things, and in the end, we came up with this methodology of data collection, like collecting uh, some sorts, doing the comparison, uh, like identifying the woods, the species, doing the, the characterization, which is uh, finding uh, similar species to that ones that we identified, and the last stage was prototyping and testing. So, we started with the 48 sorts of type collected in different parts of Brazil, and I would like to thank uh, especially Claudio Rocha, was really helpful. He sent us the first sorts, and Selma Oliveira, who is my supervisor at the PhD, and that later on, um, Rafael Neder added some sorts to this uh, collection. So this was uh, late 2016. The first sorts we collected, by, uh, provided by Selma and Claudio Rocha, and I asked them, look, I need things that can be damaged, because they need to do sanding, scratching, a type, so if you have damaged stuff, it's better for me. So you see things are really, really uh, used, you know, old stuff. And then uh, I found, started collecting things that uh, at the Letter Press Workshop at the University of Brasilia, the place that uh, opened my eyes to typography when I was uh, a young student back in 97. So uh, this uh, is basically the, 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 we have like only one design in wood, which is this condensed, bold, grotesque, uh, in these sizes. We call uh, this unit in Portuguese, the, the canon, we call it furo, furo means hole, so it's like these little holes uh, in the, the, the metal part in, on the side of the type. So we have these units like from left to right, two and a half, three, four, five, and six uh, 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 canons. B basically, these are fun uh, Funtin mode produced, uh, and then Isabella Aragão uh, mentioned this in her PhD thesis. Funtin mode produced mostly two designs, uh, and she talks more about the designs produced by Funtin mode, which were mostly ripoffs of German type. This is something that they copied by Stempel, and you can see that there is some uh, type that were not used. This is from the Letter Press Workshop in Brasilia. And the other one is uh, Vic Vittoria, which is a uh, battle block. Uh, it's like a, a design. It's funny, this is the state uh, uh, that I found this, this type. This green paint was in a, in a workshop in Brasilia, in a Letter Press Workshop. Like, uh, at some time, this probably would be dumped, you know? So, this is, uh, they, they started separating the, the wood in, in, by species. So this is Sikingia, Aspidosperma, uh, uh, Poecilante, uh, Balforodendron. So these are the, the samples from the wood collection they used to compare. And Virola, and the, the wood, the, the, the species that was the more present is the, for example, this is a, uh, something that came probably from the U.S., which is a, a Fagus, uh, uh, which is, I can't remember the name. No, well, it's something that people use at virgin wood type to, 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 to make wood type. And the most used was this species, uh, the Androanthos. Uh, it's actually it's not in the species, it's a, we're talking about genus level. They couldn't, uh, uh, because they're working with mac macroscopic images. This is, uh, they consider, they don't consider microscopic images, uh, so they use the microscope, but they consider it macroscopic images. So uh, they use this tool to make measurements in size, frequent, 
uh, frequency and depth of the vases, and they compare with these samples from the Dr. Harry Van Sloten, uh, a Dutch guy who w was in Brasilia to, to found this lab, uh, and with these macroscopic images, we can identify uh, at uh, the species at the genus level, which is good enough for us. So we have some of these images, uh, and you can see, apart from this phagos here, which is exot exotic for us, uh, all of the others are Brazilian uh, species, and we can have a zoom. You can see the vases, these white, white holes, and around them, around the vases, the, the, the brown, uh, the brown part is, are the fibers. So this is, this is the part that gives uh, strength to the type. Uh, after uh, doing these ma this macroscopic images and comparing the, the, the samples, uh, Malu, which is the, the, the girl who is the internship, she came to the conclusion that we need uh, some specific density, so it's hardwood uh, with resistance to termites, which is something important, especially in, in, the, in northern Brazil, there are a lot of them. And I came to the conclusion that the species are the same that people use for making roofs. Uh, or making structures, so it needs to be really uh, heavy stuff. Uh, these are some of the species suggested by the study. Uh, IP, uh, I would like to talk a bit about this. It's the, the, this is the national tree, it's a national symbol for us. And just because it's a beautiful tree and it's found in the Amazon, in the, in the center, and in the south of Brazil, and you can get it also in, in other parts of South America. So this can be found in uh, yellow, uh, uh, this uh, uh, rose, and it's such a part of the, my daily, not daily because this is in the winter, but our <laughs> it comes like 15, uh, these beautiful flowers, they come like 15 days a year, but it's all around in the city, so it's a, just a beautiful thing to see. And people do things like when they, this, at this street, there are many of these, uh, uh, so they, they're organizing like the, the Ipe festival. Uh, it's with like people lay, laying on the grass and uh, concerts, food, food trucks, and everything. It's really nice. And so this, this species, uh, uh, this is very, it's a key species for us. Ipe is the most important uh, uh, thing we found, and, uh, uh, and most of the type we analyzed was made of Ipe, this, this Androanthus uh, genus. And then, after that, we started prototyping. So the process was finding the right pieces of wood. Uh, we had to prepare the raw materials and then prepare the files. This pre-press, pre which is not pre-press because it's not printing, so it's fabrication. Preparing the files to cut the types is something that it took me a while to understand how to do it right. And and the last part uh, is the milling with the CNC router. Uh, we, we made two tests. One of the one of, uh, first tests was with a complete set using a single uh, chosen variety, uh, which is called Kumaru, so I, I tried to cut a whole alphabet. And then one set using different species uh, with different types of wood that were provided by the lab, the Alexandre from the, the, the Brazilian Forest Services, he provided the, the woods. So this is the type, uh, this is the kind of wood uh, Alexandre uh, provided me. Later on, we tried to make square, rectangular uh, pieces because nowadays it's quite hard to work with wood, like with solid wood, 
all the uh, wood workshops are made to, like, are built, are con conceived nowadays to work with plywood, so it's not very easy to work with this kind of stuff. And then uh, I, may, I cut the complete set. Uh, I went to a wood deposit, wood shop, a lumber, I think, yeah. And, and then I, I bought this big, uh, big piece here. And now you can see the problem that working with this, you don't have like saws to cut the wood at this size. So it's really difficult to work it. So I said, I'm going to make big type. No. Not that easy. So this is a video. Be um, it's a bit noisy. Let's see if it hurts. So look what happened. It's quite heavy. So this guy is working at the university wood workshop. He makes like that and everything, and he was helping me to cut this thing into half. And then after cutting this in the middle, uh, I had to do this, uh, let me see, this fat kind of, this, this machine will turn the wood into like a bit more flat after cutting it. Quite a smelly wood. It smells like cheese. It's very strong. My my wife was complaining. Well, the house is smelling like cheese everywhere. Uh, yeah, it, it. There are some others that we called shit wood. It smells like shit. I tried not to use this one. So the last part was to make like these slices, these slabs of wood. And it goes on. Uh, after that, we came to the, uh, the to the Fab Lab. It's called Brasilia Fab Lab. The guys who helped me to, with the production with the CNC router. So first thing, you have to put these slabs on a on a flat surface uh, of made of MDF, of, uh, and you have to make holes to f make this very tight, fixed at, the, at this flat surface. Uh, and uh, the, the router, it cuts these holes to, to make sure that everything will be the same height and flat. So we could uh, hammer this into these holes, uh, and then it does a process of milling on both sides to, ma to make sure it will be f completely flat and uh, square angle uh, at both sides, so it does like this. You can see that it's not completely level. It's a bit uh, on th on this side is a bit lower. And it goes on. And then after that, we chose some uh, designs that could be good for cutting. The one on the top is very round, and it's also inspired in Bertolt blocks or Vittoria, uh, made by Funti mode. So we, th we thought that could have a historical background, something connected with letterpress in Brazil. And Vinila, which was designed by Flora de Carvalho, and it will be released by Plau soon. Uh, Plau is a foundry in Rio de Janeiro, and it has a lot of ink traps. So it's something I want to, wanted to see how the beat can come into small angles. So this is the kind of pre-press thing we do. Uh, and we have three things here. Uh, the uh, First, it cuts the... Let me re-elaborate this. You have to do like a typeface with the two styles. The black, the black part is the outline, and the yellow part is the spacing. You have to typeset these things in order to make sure you have both. Uh, 
And there is something left, because the, the drill, uh, not the drill, the bit, it can't enter the, the, this small angle. So uh, I have this reference from Roberto Arista, who was a student at the KBK. He made this amazing uh, tool. It's a plugin for script for the Robofont. Uh, and then I tested this. It shows the, the, the you can configure it, the, the, the point size and the size of the bit. So the, the green part shows uh, where the, the bit goes, and the red part shows where errors can happen, like the bit doesn't enter in this part. It doesn't fit there. So there are some other examples. This is, for example, uh, a, a vanilla, the other typeface that I was talking about. It has lots of vent traps and everything. And this is the, the, the those are some screens of the cam, simu the, the, the cam, which is the program that simulates the cut. Uh, so you generate a code and put this into the CNC router. So first, the flattening, then the cut with, with a, a large six millimeter uh, bit, and then the profile, the outline with the two millimeter bit, which, is, which will give the, the the finishing for the type. So this is what happens when we are cutting. I made these uh, small movies to show the, the process. Uh, and someone was painting with spray in a closed place. It was like hell. This purple thing that appears is, is a big mask. And Okay, and then it, th this picture shows a bit some parts of the project, the process. Uh, so you can see it's uh, the rough, uh, the rough uh, milling here, and then it becomes a bit more soft and the finishing. Now you can see the the bits where the spacing is. Uh, this is something we tried, but next time I will do a solid piece without cutting the spacing here at this, this point, because it's very difficult late to make the finishing with a saw later on, because I had to cut the pieces, so I will not do this again. Uh, some things you learn with the process. And then this wood is Kumaru and the typeface, and after that, after the profile, you get some pieces like this that I made myself the, with, with etching tools. I just removed these bits here. It's not difficult. You can see more of these bits that can be removed later on because it, it makes the, 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 time, uh, the time of milling uh, shorter. So it makes things much more cheaper. So if I was to... Uh, cut this out with the, the CNC router would take more time, okay? So this is the second test with uh, the different types of wood Alexandre provided. And you can see these parts here. And now we're going to show, I'm going to show a bit the, these things Rafael Neder printed with these types uh, in Belo Horizonte. So this is the workshop of Matias, a, a node printer, really good guy. Uh, and these are some types we produced. And later on, uh, I can show you guys. Uh, I, have, I brought some of these prints Rafael made. And I brought some of the type produced by us. So it's here. Uh, anyone is free to, to, to get. Yeah. Have a look. So uh, there's a lot to improve, of course, uh, especially uh, to get this exact body and type height. Uh, but we're having, we're getting some. The next step is to make this a bit more. Uh, sorry, we have some repeated uh, slides. Next step is to get a bit more finished stuff. So these are the prints made by Rafael. 
And we made this poster to test the types. And actually, it works. And we're happy with the results. The outline of the types are OK, really good. The most difficult stuff is to get the right height and the right body height. Uh, but we're, I'm very open to suggestions of guys like who are interested in wood type who could, who could help us. Thank you.